a 60-year-old lady presented to the clinic with perianal pain over the past five months and a history of significant weight loss. Her GP suspects that she has an underlying anal mass. How would you manage this patient? I will do a full history and examination, specifically asking about symptoms related to the anal mass and its duration, the presence of bleeding or discharge, and a history of infection with human papillomavirus or HIV infection. The patient's sexual preferences and smoking history is also relevant. I will perform a thorough examination, including a precise description of the mass, inspection for regional lymphadenopathy, including both groins, and I would check for hepatomegaly. I would then proceed to book the patient for an urgent examination under anesthesia and biopsies, and obtain an MRI scan of the pelvis, including L5, to assess the inguinal region for nodal involvement. I would also request a CT scan of the chest, abdomen and pelvis for staging. Finally, I would consider a PET CT scan and ultrasound-guided fine-needle aspiration cytology of any involved inguinal lymph nodes in line with European guidelines. During your examination, the patient could not tolerate a rectal examination and an anal mass could not be clearly elicited. The patient insists that he has a fissure on the basis that he had it in the recent past. How would you approach this situation? While an underlying anal fissure is a possibility, the possibility of an ulcerated painful anal cancer cannot be excluded. In this context, I will still proceed with an examination under anesthesia, rigid sigmoidoscopy, and biopsies as an urgent procedure. Gynecological examination is also relevant due to proximity of genital organs and association of HPV with cancer of the cervix. How would you manage this patient if a biopsy confirms anal squamous cell carcinoma? with provisional radiological staging on MRI of T3 disease. The crucial next step involves discussion in the Regional Anal Cancer Multidisciplinary Meeting. T3 disease and localized anal cancer in general responds well to chemoradiotherapy, typically including radiotherapy combined with intravenous 5-fluorouracil and mitomycin. Follow-up is arranged at 3-6 to six month intervals with rectal examination, proctoscopy and groin node assessment. An annual staging CT of the chest, abdomen and pelvis should be arranged for at least three years. In the case of anal margin SCC, local excision should be considered if a clear margin greater than 1 mm is possible and is only reserved for localized T1 disease. Is there a role for abdominal perineal resection of the rectum in the context of anal cancer? Salvage abdominal perineal resection may be indicated when there is a poor response to chemoradiotherapy recurrent disease after chemoradiotherapy, and true anal adenocarcinoma. Chemoradiotherapy is still an option in advanced anal SCC with rectal involvement or true rectal SCC, though these patients may be ultimately more amenable to radical surgery. Abdominal perineal resection for relapsed anal cancer is a different operation from that used for rectal cancer. The perineal skin resection and resection at the level of the ischial tuberosities is wider, and often referred to as port bottle resection. Further difficulties lie in the presence of irradiated cutaneous tissue and the possible need for exentrative procedures. Therefore, perineal plastic reconstruction with musculocutaneous flaps should be considered in almost all cases. Which HPV subtypes is associated with anal cancer? Anal cancer is associated with subtypes 16 and 18 and less commonly subtype 33. How would you manage patients with a locally advanced anal cancer with a fistula involving the vagina? An option of a pretreatment end colostomy is preferable to a loop colostomy. Patients should also be advised that the colostomy may be permanent. As these patients represent a higher risk group with a higher relapse rate, care should be taken when performing surgical incisions or port site locations so potential future flaps are not compromised. Awareness of future flap techniques are necessary including vertical rectus abdominis flap, bilateral gracilis flap, VY bilateral gluteus maximus advancement flap, and the lotus petal fatty cutaneous flap.